Hey, all my puppy owners. This is me and Rose Montrose, and we're gonna talk to you today about line brushing your standard poodle. Um, I know they're puppies right now, but um, this is good for them and for you. And so um, a lot of people have been asking me, how do I take care of my puppy's coat? Um, how do I bathe? How do I um, brush? And so I'm just gonna go through a few things with you quickly, hopefully. Um, Rose is not happy about being on the camera, so she's getting, see how her mouth does this? She's very nervous about this. <laughs> she doesn't like the camera. But, um, so anyways, I'm gonna talk to you about um, the tools that we use to brush and why, and um, show you what line brushing is and what's the most beneficial for your puppy to start on now. Now, you know, they don't have this much hair, but they, you know, and you may never have that much hair. If you don't, if you decide that you're going to do a short body on your poodle, you don't need to know line brushing necessarily. Um, unless they end up with a really dense coat and then uh, you know you might need it still then even if it's a short coat so um, she was gone uh, or I was gone for 10 days away from her and while I was gone she did not get brushed and I thought oh it'll be okay you know but she started the puppy coat blow which means her puppy hair is falling out and her new hair is coming in and the adult hair even though it's coarse, it kind of holds on to the puppy hair and it turns into a mat very quickly. So, not fun. So she was completely matted by the time I got back, which was really sad. And so I have a show coming up with her, so I needed to keep her top knot. So I had to pick through her top knot very carefully and get all the mats out of that. And then I, I just shaved her body down, I'll show you. You can see her body. I shaved it short because I don't, it grows fast and we don't need that long of a coat on the body, but we are needing a long neck hair. And so she has a mullet, but you know, we don't mind mullets. We're from the eighties. Well, she's not. Anyways, so um, I'm just gonna show you what I use this doesn't mean that there's no other things to use. I'm just showing you in case you want to know, you know, what, what you can use. So I'm gonna, sh um, first thing is I don't hardly ever brush my dogs with a, when they're wet. So um, I prefer not to try and brush their hair. It's sticky, I don't use conditioner because I want their hair to be, to have sub substance and to be, um, have body. And so if you put, um, especially in a puppy, if you put conditioner in their hair, their hair just kind of falls over. It doesn't, their top knot won't stand up and you know, it just doesn't work for me. So I don't use conditioner, but also not only that is puppy hair that's, that's falling out will actually mat worse if you, um, put conditioner on it. I've noticed that. So I do use a people shampoo on my dogs and I use a purple shampoo for the white dogs. Um, and you can get that at Sally Beauty or you can really get it um, at any store. Any purple shampoo um, will work as long as your dog is not allergic to it. So maybe test it on their skin first. And then if they don't seem to have a reaction to it or get real itchy, then go ahead and um, use it for shampooing. So um, that's what I use for the for the white hair to keep it nice and white. And um, for the darker hair, I just use my own shampoo. And if it's good enough for me, it's good enough for my baby. So, all right, so this is what, if I do have to brush or comb, if there's like a mat that I just see and I wanna try and get it out when the hair is wet, um, I use one of these. This is a Safari, it's called a rake. And it is not a razor rake, so it doesn't have anything that cuts. It's got these really weird um, bristles or tie, I don't know, what do you call these? The, you know, those, those things. <laughs> I can't think, I've got menopause brain. Anyways, those things, um, they move around and they give a little bit. 
So when you're trying to go through a coat and get out a mat when it's wet, it will actually kind of demat for you. I mean, it's not the perfect dematter and it doesn't work for all mats, but it will kind of take some mats out. So that's what I use. You will get hair when you are brushing your poodle. They're not non-shedding. They do shed. They just, their hair doesn't fall to the ground and it's a different kind of hair. It's more like fuzz. It's, um, that's her baby coat coming out now. So you'll get more of it when their baby coat is coming out. But um, as they get older, it won't, it won't shed as much, even when you're um, brushing. So I do use that wet and dry. This one I use mostly wet. Then I'm gonna move on to the um, pin brush that I use. It's also a Safari. You can use any brand. I mean, as long as it looks ergonomically correct so that you are not having to, I, I brush like this most of the time um, because of the break in the wrist. I've broken this wrist before and you don't wanna like be doing this with your wrist all the time. It's not good for carpal tunnel. It's just not good for you. So they make them ergonomically to um, fit well in your hand so that you obviously have to brush the hair like let's put this pillow up here like this you don't want to brush the hair like this and you don't want to brush it backwards you always want to brush towards the handle so always this way i guess this is backwards but going dragging it across towards the handle never backwards this way um, and you don't want to dig it because you will give them burn brush burn and it hurts if you ever hit yourself with this while you're brushing fast it will make you bleed and it hurts. And so you don't wanna make them hurt like that. And you don't want them to not love being brushed. So this one is a little softer and I do like it a little more, um, but it also has this hair release. It's an automatic cleaning, you know, so that you can just take the hair off like that and then your, t your teeth come back out or your bristles. And also on these, if you somehow, while you're opening it, you get something in here that bends these, they will never go back to flat again. So they're supposed to look like that. But this side doesn't because I must have bent, I bent those bristles and now they don't go in there flat. So just saying this was a $15 brush and my dog chewed it. Isn't that nice? So anyways, that's what puppies do. Um, so anyways, that's a safari as well. And then the um, holy grail of combs for poodles is the metal comb. And you're gonna wanna get one. You could get two different kinds if you wanted to. One that's got, that's a lot bigger, longer for your, when your poodle gets big and you need to go through some kind of thicker hair. But when you are um, starting out with a puppy, you need one that's got the small close together. Um, what do you call what do you call those? <laughs> bristles? They're not bristles. Anyways, whatever those are called, you know those things. Um, but then these teeth, teeth, are further apart, so you can get something that's a little more, um, you know, you can start out with this one and then move down to this to the smaller closer together teeth. So that one, you're gonna use this a lot, a lot, a lot. So line brushing. We're gonna start, um, this is how I line brush. I put my dog on the floor. I like her to be comfortable and I like to be comfortable and she'll just lay down. I let them lay down. And, and I even let them lay down when I'm blow drying them. When I'm, when I'm doing anything that I can um, let them lay down with, I let them lay down or sit. Like if I'm, um, blow drying them or if I'm just cutting something like their ears or something that doesn't really I don't need to see the whole um, picture of the dog to, to know that I'm cutting it correctly for the confirmation of it then I will use um, I will let them lay down so what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay our dog down and I usually put a pillow on my lap preferably one with a poodle on it like that one whoops there you go <laughs> um, yeah and then I, I have them put their head down on the pillow just like this 
and she's used to this. She doesn't like it necessarily. Um, she doesn't like the camera, I should say. Then you're gonna start anywhere. You can start on one side of the head. So I'll start up here, because she's got um, some very curly hair. It looks like she could be starting to get matted here. And I'm gonna turn this down so you can look at it instead of my face. So I hate looking at my face too. But <laughs> so anyways, okay. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get a line straight across, that's why they call it line brushing, and you're gonna take your brush away from the ear, away from the head or away from the skin, and you're gonna brush close to the skin. Make sure that you are getting close to the skin, right up next to it. So you're gonna do that. Let me get you over here maybe a little more. No, nope, that ain't gonna work. Okay, let's get that down. Okay, so you're gonna brush it down like this, down and away, down and away, making sure that you're not brushing like this or brushing, you know, like this. You want it straight onto the scalp and just lay it flat and brush down. It's kind of hard to show you like this, but that's what we're gonna do. Then you're gonna take your comb, after you brushed with the brush, stay, they're gonna take your comb and you're gonna go through it with your comb. Rose, stay. She does not wanna do this today. Lay down, lay down. Good girl, stay, lay down. Okay, so then you're gonna go through it with your comb until you get no resistance, okay? So like I'm getting resistance right there, so I'm gonna brush that out or comb it out and make sure you're getting all the way to the scalp with that and then comb, okay? Then you're gonna go to your next line you're gonna make another line, just drag some down, some hair, and pull it down. And you're gonna take, it's only like maybe an inch at a time or not even that thick. It's like a half an inch at a time. And you're gonna brush through that, then grab your comb and comb through it. Make sure you get all the way to the roots, okay? Then you're gonna go another, bring, bring down some more, brush it down. and then get your comb and comb through it. See, there's a knot right there and it's way down close to her scalp. So then when you get to that, I don't know if you can see that, when you get to something like that, you're gonna stop what you're doing, 